does this really show that wind power is getting more efficient or doesn't it just show that it's had lots of subsidies flung at it and this has just made it more scalable? Uh, no, we are undoubtedly becoming much more efficient. I guess the pattern is one that is quite predictable if you think about it. We're still a, a fairly young industry and what we're seeing is we're in the steep part of the learning curve where economies of scale and scope, the benefits of experience are really starting to take hold and we're seeing costs tumble uh, as you just described. But, I mean, a subsidy is still a subsidy. I mean, it is still worth pointing out that even at 57.50, this is substantially higher than the current spot price, which is about £43 a megawatt hour. Well, it is, but it's uh, considerably less than it was, and, and it's got us into a position where you can think it of in terms of subsidy parity, if you like, with other forms of generation. We really are now in the mix with conventional forms of uh, generation technology, fossil technologies, and that's before you factor in, of course, the, the benefit of zero carbon footprint. So it makes it a really compelling proposition. But is it really meaningful to compare one form of energy with another when, for example, wind power is intermittent? The wind doesn't always blow. I mean, same with solar. The sun doesn't always shine. With things like nuclear, it's always there. It's always on. Yeah, and there is undoubtedly a benefit of that. And nuclear proponents will say, you know, it's base load. As you say, it's always there. I, I'm certainly not going to argue that there's no value to that. But what I find really interesting and, and really exciting is uh, progress in energy storage technologies, the ability to sort of harness renewable technologies like offshore wind, store it in batteries, convert it to hydrogen. All of these forms of energy are tumbling in price. And it opens up the prospect of an entirely green energy system for the future, a new energy paradigm. But you're not suggesting that, I mean, because wind power is intermittent, we still need that backup base load. I mean, would you, for example, still go ahead with Hinkley Point C? Well, fortunately, I, I don't have to make that decision. I, I think what's really good is that question is starting to be asked, and it, and it now becomes ripe. We have a renewable technology that we can deploy at massive scale, and the North Sea has almost limitless potential here. We can power Europe 1.8 times over just from the, the energy in the North Sea. So it becomes a very ripe question. I think we therefore need to debate the benefits of intermittency versus baseload and look to see how we can bring on those renewable uh, storage technologies to complement wind. Very briefly, when will this storage technology really start to bring about meaningful cost cuts? Well, I think, I think we're seeing it. Um, and we're seeing batteries deployed in, in domestic premises across Europe, particularly Germany. We're seeing electric vehicles becoming uh, much more uh, cost effective. So we're seeing battery costs tumbling as, as much as offshore wind. All right, Matthew Wright. Appreciate you joining me. Thanks. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.